This meeting is being recorded. Awesome. Hello. I'm super excited today because we have a conversation with two epic badass ladies today. Um, and I'm super excited that, that I have these powerful women in my life and we share the road together for many, many hours. Um, and so today's conversation is about adaptive running and being an athlete. So we couldn't think of any better humans to have on the panel today than these lovely ladies. So I'm going to hand over to um, Chantal and Anita quickly to introduce themselves and then we can get into chatting about all the things. So Chantal, do you want to go first? Yes, I can. I'm Chantal Fisher. Age 44, <laughs> uh, I've been running for seven years. Yeah, more or less seven years. So I'm running with you, Kaylee, for the past four years, if I'm not mistaken. So I am loving my races. I'm loving running as a pilot runner for you. And then I'm also um, working full time as an assistant in the governance department. I have a little boy, I have a little dog, and that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Anita, do you want to tell the people who you are? <laughs> yes, Kelly, sure. I'm Anita Engelbrecht. I have been running since. 2016 and um, with the open money is two meters tall so I think he always tells people that he, his brain doesn't know what his legs does but um, yeah it's been a blessing to be able to to be on the road and actually experience the different routes you know because prior to 2016 I was the team manager for my for my mom and my dad and my brother. I always organized everything for them. I saw them in um, at the start and I, I've um, sat next to the road supporting them. But oh my goodness, it's just such, um, I love to be a part of the running community and to also be able to participate and to run as an adaptive athlete. So um, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I really want to be a professional athlete um, full time, but <laughs> we're getting there, not yet. So um, I'm currently working for Santa Marie in the, in the finance department, doing some cash management there. So that's what I'm doing on a full time basis. And then, yeah, I also love running, um, as you know, and then I mean, you know, the, the bigger the adventure, the better. And I believe if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. So that's me in a nutshell, living on the edge, loving life with my four dogs. Awesome. Thank you. I think I should maybe do a little bit of an intro as well. <laughs> um, so I started running in, I think 2015, I'm not sure. Um, and I started with a 10K and uh, I <clears throat> ran in my mountain chair. And uh, I would not advise doing that. It's not an ideal situation to run in a chair that is not designed for the road, it's designed for boulders and climbing and things. It was an experience, um, but I think it, <clears throat> the bug definitely bit. I, I, I think running is a phenomenal thing that we get to do. Um, so I have done 
Well, I'm not I think <laughs> we finished three, but it's okay. You don't have to finish every race to be a, like an athlete. Um, and I think what is amazing to me is the lessons that we learn on the road as runners and how we grow as people because we decide to run really, really far <laughs> together. Um, and <clears throat> I wanted to ask you guys, um, first of all, what do you think is your best memory or lesson from being an adaptive athlete or being in a team? As a as a pilot runner, so I'm gonna ask Anita to go first. Okay, Kelly. Yeah. Um. So I I um started running in 2015. I think our first race was the Moore Stevens race in Stellenbosch. So um that was on a Wednesday evening. Um, and the Elton asked me if I want to go for a run, and of course I said yes. And what he didn't know is that I was having a, a tax examination the following day. But I, <laughs> but I actually withheld um, that specific piece of information from him because I wanted to go for a run so badly. So from then onwards, the, I think I was sold out to run and to running. I think um, probably my my the memory that pops up first in my, my mind right, will probably be um, that year when we finished comrades for the first time. I think I think that was just epic, and that's that's one of the highlights of my running career because I believe no comrades will ever be so special as your first one. And I also think it's like that because you don't to really know what you let yourself into when you're doing it the first time around. So that was a real, that's really a um, good memory for me. And then also, um, I think the lessons that we learn, I mean, I think I learn a lesson <laughs> in each and every race. And and just to mention about a few is that um, I, don't think we appreciate how much we can achieve if we collaborate and we do it in teams and we do it um, with people. So that was just profound for me to, to see what you can achieve if you if you do it in a team. And then also, that, yeah, I mean, your body can override your, uh, your mind, can override your body at any time. Because as you know, it can get real tough, but it's all about perseverance. And I think um, it's it's not necessarily about the race, right? It's about the character. I'm I, I'm under the impression that under no circumstances you are a person that crosses the the person that's crossing the finish line is an entirely different person than the one that started the race because I think throughout any race you learn so much about your own body and about what you are capable of that it's it's just great um, to be able to to do what we do and to do it in the way that we are doing it and um, that's just um, awesome for me. Yeah. I agree with everything that you just said. <laughs> it looks like Chantal agrees too. Do you have something? What do you have to add to that? Wow, Anita, that was well said. I am um, actually having goosebumps listening to you. That was beautiful. And I totally agree with you when you say um, every race is a different experience. We, we, we really do, do pick up different experiences. Um, negative and positive but at the end of the race we actually end up being so positive whether we made it in time or didn't make it in time but we start in one behavior behavioral moment and we end up in a different moment so your yeah, our personalities change from the beginning to the end of the race whether we laugh or whether we cry we just we're not the same 
our personalities are not the same because our experiences are so different. And so what stands out for me is the fact that on two occasions, Kaylee and I had no co-pilot and a day or two, we needed to look and find someone. And it's just so amazing how we as runners all form one team, whether we are from one running club or, or we are just one team on that day and we just connect and we just make it known and we make it out there, whether we smile, laugh or cry. But it's just an amazing feeling that someone that came on board a day or two before just made our day a success. One amazing thing to be on the road. And we do really find ourselves, we find our voices on the road. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I remember um, the first race that, that Chantal did with me as a solo pilot was the Festival of Running. And um, that was an amazing experience for me as, as an adaptive athlete with a with um, you because I remember when you started running with me, you were very, um, I think the catchphrase was, I'm scared. <laughs> and on that day, like you were just like the loudest human being I've ever heard and like telling people to get out the way and like wheelchair coming through. And like, that was just a phenomenal experience to, to be a part of and to, um, to experience with you. And that was, that was amazing to me. Um, Chantal, can you just share for people who don't know or don't realize, what, what do you think are important things to share and for people to know and understand about being a pilot runner or a support runner to an adaptive assisted athlete? Yes, Kaylee, um, when we as, as support runners or pilot runner, I would, I would like to call myself a support runner. I don't think I'm a pilot runner. So when, when we are on, on the road, especially me, I put myself second and I put you first because I'm doing it for myself, yes, but I am your support runner for a good reason because we both love running. We both love being on the road, but I have to put myself second first because I need to see to your smile and what makes you happy and what makes you happy makes me happy. And it is not an easy job. It's not easy being on the road. It's very difficult. You need to have your physical, mental strength and you have to have um, a loud, loud, boisterous voice and your personality really needs to shine out. So I've learned not to get angry when people say things like, oh, can I get a lift? Oh, um, when is it my turn to sit? Oh, are you enjoying the race, Kaylee? So I try not to. I think Kaylee and I know really we just keep quiet or we smile or we don't say anything at all. We look all we look away. So I know that uh, started annoying me in the beginning when I started running with you, Kaylee, but now I sort of know how to. And also what I've learned over the years, I don't fuss anymore. I don't worry whether Kaylee is warm or cold. Yes, I do worry, but I don't say anything. <laughs> I don't fuss. I'll watch her. Um, other than that, I just push through the race. Because that I learned my mistake on at the comrades on Peel's Hill, <laughs> the jacket issue that actually gave me a very well lesson learned. Hey, Kaylee. <laughs> awesome. I think that's a huge deal that people kind of think that we're super fragile as like adaptive wheelchair athletes, and I think um, it's quite a journey for people to sort of 
then like our partners and also the other people on the road like don't treat us like we're little puss and dolls like we can handle stuff and and uh like we're, it's hard for us as well um i think this is a big thing that people kind of don't see and understand that we're also working hard like we have our bodies to compete with um before we even get to the to the active running side of of like fitness and, and physical like readiness so I know that there are many things that bother me that people say on the road and I want to know from Anita like what are some of the things that you that just like grind your gears when people say it to you um because I know I have a whole list and we make it tiny with the, each race that we do. And we get new ones sometimes as well. So what are some of the things that irritate you that people say that they need to stop saying to you? Well, Kelly, I can't resist to make this comment, but I definitely know one of the things that irritates you is the bell on the joggers. But anyway, um, to answer your question, <laughs> To answer your question, right? Um, and um, I, I had a warm and fuzzy feeling in my heart when Chantal just mentioned some of the comments that you guys have to deal with. Because um, in all honesty, our experience um, was, it's, it's no different. Um, you know, I can still vividly recall when we, when we shared the ra- on the road in one race and a, a guy came fast and he said um well that's a nice way of, of of seeing the road or running the race or something to that effect and and you said something as well um we are the, we haven't seen your option on the menu so that, that was just summarizing summarizing the feeling that i felt inside of me so accurately because I don't think people necessarily realize and appreciate what effort it is to sit up and to sit in on that chair and to, to even put a smile on your face. I, um, I don't know if it's a grin or if it's it a smile, but anyway. So, um, yeah, I think people, um, are, they say it can be ignorant. Um, a lack of exposure, I don't know, but um, it, there's definitely comments like, are you enjoying the road? Um, we're Kaiku like it is this. Um, but I'm also, I'm also getting the fact that it sometimes comes from a good part in your heart. I, I, I guess that they, they, it's a conversation maker, perhaps. I'm not too sure, <laughs> but, but it's definitely not, it's definitely not um, just about sitting and doing nothing. Um, I love statistics and I love stats. So um, I actually got a fright when I, when I got myself a Garmin watch and when I saw the statistics, um, it rattled me for the first few races because I wasn't, I was aware of um, the strain on my body because I could feel it the, the following day, but um, with the Garmin watch, it's actually scary to see what, what the statistics and stuff is like. So, um, yeah, it seems as if people think that, think that, that we, we just sit and we we not not doing anything, and I also um, got the sense that um, you know we didn't actually. I don't know about you, but but I <laughs> I'm not going for prize money just yet. So <laughs> because just um so with that I'm saying um with me being on the road, it doesn't take anything away from the next person. You see. Nothing is so special. It's just, I just see it as I'm living out my passion for sport and running in just 
from different, I appreciate that it may be in a different way, but I'm just living out my love for sport as any other individual. Awesome. I love that so much. I think what <laughs> what's really, I think, interesting to me, and like, it's funny sometimes, but not at the moment, in the moment, it's not often. Um, I think what I've learned is that I'm an endurance athlete. <laughs> like, my body works best in long distance running. I think my um a lot of people talk about it with cycling if you're like a diesel engine that you take a while to get warm but once you're warm then it's solid and I think um I think that's my zone with the running as well so I I don't like doing the 10ks and the 5ks and the 15s I'll do I like 15s and they're, they're good but, but I think <laughs> they are also like that's a that's a like my zone um decision of doing like the longer distances but I also feel that there's a practical aspect to that as well that it's a lot of logistics there's a lot of admin to being a wheelchair athlete <laughs> um you can't just pick up a pair of shoes or not pick up a pair of shoes and go for a run like you there's a lot of planning that goes into it as well and so for me if I'm gonna be on the road and wake up at four in the morning or whatever it is I've got to be there for longer than it took me to get there like <laughs> so I like the long distances. Um, I also think that the wheelchair plays a huge role, obviously, but I think that my chair has a personality as well. So we give it space within the team to have its own meltdowns and malfunctions. Um, and we have some stories about how the chair did not cooperate on days when we needed it to. And Anita, I know you have some of those stories as well with um, sludge and things spraying in your face and all these kinds of things. <laughs> Are there moments for you where you kind of think like, oh, my wheelchair is so ridiculous right now? <laughs> or are you just like, cool, cool, let's go with the flow? So, right, I don't necessarily appreciate the small stuff, but um, so we must appreciate that small stuff. <laughs> it's got the tendency of exploding and suddenly become something big. So, um, yeah, it, um, Blitzy needs to be able. I think that's why we had a chair. So it, the least that it can do is um, do its best. But um, yeah, we had a few challenges with a few bursting tires, flat tires. I think we've yeah, we, I think we've done quite a lot of kilom kilometers with a flat front tire. So luckily, we have solids on the side now. So we learn the lessons as we go. And um, also, um, we used to have some a harness that we strapped. And then I used to strap myself in just for some support for my up, upper body. I recently started with physiotherapy after I um, had COVID a few times. I decided to get back into the rhythm of getting some physiotherapy. So that's um, helping my muscle tear in my upper body tremendously. But yeah, um, we also um, had some issues with the harness. So then the, the only other option is that we, um, we yeah, in one race, we even had to use Hilton's belt to get me strapped in because, you know, our straps didn't work properly, properly. But yeah, so um, that's okay. That's okay. We, we learn to roll with the punches, literally. <laughs> yeah, I think... 
What's funny though, and what's important, I think, is that it's not about not making mistakes ever, it's about making new mistakes every time we do it and learning from those and making making new plans for for situations. And I think sometimes it's funny. Like I remember um I and terrifying also often. I think there's a lot of um there's a lot of trust that we have to have as adaptive athletes and as adaptive teams, you know. Like, um, I think we have to trust our, our runners, but our runners also have to trust us to communicate um, and, like, share when we need something. And to, um, that's important. I think one of the most terrifying things that I've ever experienced as a runner. <laughs> I can see Chantel's, like, I know what this is. <laughs> Was, um, running in the two oceans, I think it was, and it, we had to go down Okapsvach, and uh, my brakes decided to not work. And I think Chantel should kind of share a little bit about that story, because I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> yes, Kaylee, that was a, a, an experience of note. We were confident and comfortable going up we were very strong going up but when we went down that oh God, so there was no controlling i know we had the um, paramedics following us from the top of oh God, so down all the way because i think people could see that we were heading towards a calamity <laughs> But gosh, we just had to work together as a team. Eh? We, we, couldn't, we couldn't shout at each other, though it was frustrating. But we just worked well as a team down that, that um, Carps of Air. That was one of them. That was OK. We, we survived. Um, we also survived another one on um, when we did the, um, the one in, in Bloberg. I can't remember the name, the 42, when we had no, our front wheel came off. The nut of the front wheel came off and um, our other runner said, guys, we're losing a wheel. <laughs> the wheel was literally off running. So, you know, Kaylee, I take my hat off for you for always smiling in these moments and always being brave. And you push us through all those times. It's amazing. But I think I think um, it's interesting. So for people who don't know, I have many many a running partner, <laughs> and I think um, I like I love that Anita has one solid Hilton and my mummy who like goes to everything and does all the things. I I tend to have a situation where I'm like oh. Let me choose from the 18 different people who have ever run with me. And I think that it's it's fun to kind of have new people coming in and learning and working with us. And um I think it's it's funny that we I remember that and then we all like basically fell off after at like two kilometers to go. And my thought was, we only need two wheels to get to the end of the race. <laughs> and we can carry a wheel, like that works too. <laughs> so I think as a, as a disabled person, I feel like I'm always in like problem solving mode. And um, I think that works out for us as a, um, as a team, because if there's an issue and something doesn't work the first time, I'm like, that's cool. I have 15 more solution options. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that's like a general disabled person thing. Um, Anita, you can confirm or deny that. But I think what's um, interesting to me as well is that <clears throat> I had this conversation with a fellow runner, Maddie, who like pilots for me a lot. And 
We were chatting that as a as an adaptive athlete, it's important to be aware of how your team is feeling, and that it's not just about me getting to the end. It's about all of us getting to the end and having solutions for the whole team, and, and um, that's what I think is really special about being part of a a duo team is that. It's about all of us. But sometimes when we're doing the longer distances, I feel like it takes a while for the for people to recognize our work in the wheelchairs. Um, I think they kind of the first like 42 kilometers of anything, they're like, enjoy, have a good morning. And uh, after that, they're like, oh my word, they're still awake, okay. <laughs> and I think the, the respect builds for us as disabled athletes later on, and our pilots and supporters get it from the beginning. But I think that's where the advocacy comes in, and we have to just keep showing up and um, showing people what we do. Um, so I have a question. What do, what do you kind of, are there moments that you don't like being an adaptive athlete because of the advocacy or, or the, have there been negative experiences for you as an adaptive athlete or as a member of a duo team um, in terms of advocacy and awareness and like acceptance as a fellow runner. Anita, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, Kelly, so um, in all honesty, um, I'm, I love it to be an athlete. I never really thought about um, what, you know, the difference is because for me, um, I don't think about it as being different, although it is. For me, in my mind, it's just me having a duel on the road. But <laughs> I can tell you um, there's a lot of work um, or a lot of work needs to be done in the in the running community. And um, it's I love it to be part of the running community, to be part of the running community. But I believe there's some work to be done, especially when we... <laughs> rock up at races, you know, and they chase us to the back. Um, well, I know, um, I know probably that's because of, you know, um, a lack of knowledge maybe, um, but, but, but that's where I feel like we've gone a long way already, but there's still some work to be done. Um, from a safety perspective, that makes um, little sense, but yeah. So in general, I it's it's nice for me. I, I love every bit of it. I love the people. I love the vibe. I love the sport. But in one um, in one area that makes me a little bit unhappy and motivates me to even you know rock up at more races um, is when. Um, and the, the structure or the, the yeah the the structure of the event failed us and that's that's where I I feel there's a lot more work needed. Hundred percent, Chantal. How do you feel about um all of that and being a being an advocate in a space where you are not the disabled athlete, but you're completely a part of the team and you, you are also affected by the um, lack of uh, inclusive attitude or whatever. How do you feel about it? I don't know how I actually feel about it, Hayley. I have mixed emotions when it comes to the organizers are very well aware of, of 
of us, you and Anita and Hilton and, and, and all the other pilot runners. Um, what annoys me is that uh, some runners would think that we are in their way, we're taking space. Um, that sort of annoys me because when I run, I do think, how do we make them more aware of our intentions? We also want to win. We also want to fulfill our, our, our way of running. We also want to be where they want to be. So, you know, the road belongs to all of us. And you know, sometimes it does make me sad when I hear, you know, some of the elite runners saying, you know, get out of the way or they will say like snotty words. Some of them do understand, but you know, the road belongs to all of us. And it's not someone mentioned to me, one of our, our runners from Sunlam asked me, how do we find Oh no, what's happening? <laughs> I think we lost Chantel there for a second. Hopefully she um, comes back. Um, I think while we, while we wait for, for Chantel's internet to um, gather itself, um, I think what is, one thing I need to mention is that I I really think that it's phenomenal that we have the opportunity to um to run. People who don't run don't understand what running is. Um, and I think there is a camaraderie. I've always, I remember being really frustrated with um <laughs> People, when they think that we're not competitive and that it's just about participation. And yeah, it's about participation, but have you met runners? Runners are like the most competitive people because we're competing against ourselves. A PB has nothing to do with any other human being. And the fact that as adaptive athletes, we also have PBs and we have goals. And um, I think we just need to take people on about it. And when you take people on, they don't really know what to do. And they're like, they're learning through that experience as well. Um, I, I, I feel like, um, I, we have a little bit different approaches to how we deal with those kinds of people <laughs> um, on the road. I think my, my kind of, I think I'm a little bit more aggressive than you, Anita. <laughs> when, when people do things and I, I'm very vocal with people when they're being ridiculous and saying things and um, I remember we did gun run I think and um, <clears throat> and somebody like jumped over my front wheel while we were running and I was just like this is why people cannot be make us responsible for other people being idiots while we're running. And like, so I'm just very loud in those moments and saying that people are not doing what they're supposed to do. And I feel like when we run past you guys and you run past us, you're just like, hello, when people are, are like in the way. And I love that so much that, that we can both have very different approaches, but it still builds the the advocacy and um and like the awareness. Um and I think for me <laughs> one thing that I appreciate about 
running um, is that oh, Chantal has load shedding. Got to love South Africa right now. So we're going to say thank you to Chantal for coming and staying while she could, while the power was still on her side. Um, she's a wonderful partner. Um, and I think learning the long distances uh, may, like, builds relationships in a really special way. Um, so I think to to end, I'm gonna ask you Anita, I'm gonna ask you one, one thing. Um, what is like one thing that you want your partner to know that he maybe doesn't know about running with you and whatever? <laughs> Well, um, that's a really tough question because I think I'm in a position where Hilton and Hilton knows me from I think I was age five and um, when he met me, so we know each other very well. But the one thing that I admire um, about Hilton is the fact that um, he'll focus on the positive, right? So he'll, he'll never complain, he'll never tell me, oh, he's going through a bad patch, or, oh, there's a cramp here, there's a cramp there, I must do the maths, and um, when, he, when he takes out the rennies, then it's no secret anymore, but um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that I'm admiring of him, you know, it's taking it in his, in his shrine, focusing on the positive, after the race, yeah, then then we'll have it like a post race um, summary of what went well, um, and then but but during the race, um, you will consistently focus on the positive things, and um, you won't give room to to negative thoughts. Um, so he's he's immensely um, strong not only physically but but emotionally as well and um yeah i think um yeah it's a blessing to run with him he's as strong as a beast um yeah so his, his mental toughness is really something that i admire awesome thank you for that um chantal the last comment from you, what is, what is one thing that you would like other runners to know or understand? One thing that you want to share with the running world about being an adaptive team? Okay, Kaylee, when, I'm, when we are in the momentum, we have uh, some of our fellow runners um, just creeping up next to us and just trying to grab the, the buggy out of my hand. <laughs> so I'm in my moment and I'm at a good pace and, and they, they, they tend to just think it's actually going to be easy. So runners, it really is not easy. We have our paces that we plan for. We actually just need to stick to that. And we will ask for help if need be. But we love you all. We don't want you to stop helping us, just not at that moment when we are at a good pace. <laughs> uh, awesome. yeah. Thank you for that. I love that. Like, keep your hands to yourself, people. <laughs> I think it's a good, a good rule to have in general, right? Um, I hope that people... But, well, first of all, thank you so much to you lovely ladies for joining the conversation and being willing to share um, and um, advise and give stories. Um, I really appreciate you. And I think, I hope that people take something good away from this conversation and, and really get involved and, and like if you want to be a pilot runner or you're a disabled person and you want to run like get involved and contact us and we can 
make a plan. We are making a plan, people. And um, running is for everybody, and we need to make space on the road for all of us. So um, thank you so much to everybody for watching and staying. And um, I'm excited to see you guys back on the road soon. Yes. Bye, Kelly. <laughs>